So, uh, very nice to uh, see you all. And uh, well, I think we are about like uh, 50 minutes behind the schedule. So, I will try to stick uh, to my time and, um, you know, uh, kind of like uh, uh, give an outline about uh, the university academic career. Um, so, well, I mean, you all have associated uh, university academics. We all are university academics. So, over the last few years, you have uh, observed uh, the university academics, um, how they perform their functions and uh, and how they interact with students and so on. So we have a basic understanding of how, uh, you know, what kind of role the um, university academics play. But um, there are certain differences uh, of uh, a university academic compared to a ministry person. Uh, for example, um, you know, the employer uh, for a university academic is university, not the Ministry of Health. Although universities are government universities, we have, like, you know, the university academics are um, government servants as well, but we are under a different mandate. Uh, so we have certain privileges uh, and uh, we have certain uh, kind of, we, are, we have certain privileges that the government uh, uh, servants uh, do not, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, enjoy. Uh, and also the responsibilities. Um, University academics have uh, uh, four major, uh, especially those who are in uh, medical faculties, have uh, four uh, key responsibilities. That is teaching undergraduate and postgraduate uh, students and research, and then patient care or clinical diagnostic work, and then um, administration activities, right? And then uh, one other important thing is the mindset, right? Uh, if you get into university academic career, it's about a transition uh, from the mentality of a, like either a medical student or a doctor uh, to a teacher. So that is also important. Now, when it comes to key responsibilities, teaching um, is of high importance. I mean, that is the primary goal of a uh, uh, primary like area that the university academy covers. So if you are not passionate about teaching, no point of thinking of um, university academic career, right? We do, in Sri Lanka, we have basically teaching positions, not 100% researcher positions, unlike in other countries, right? So uh, you have an essential teaching role, right? And then involving in research, and also if you are in the clinical department or paraclinical or preclinical, uh, if you, uh, you may have, depending on the situation, you may have patient care responsibilities as well as diagnostic service providing entities, right? And then in the university system, you have various administration roles, uh, you have to be prepared for them, right? So uh, academic career track um, in a university, like there are various positions that uh, the, or steps that you uh, you know go through uh, from the very beginning, um, the lecturer probationary, um, the equivalent position in the Ministry of Health is just a medical officer, right? So like with primary qualifications of MBBS, right? And then the next stage is lecturer confirmed. Um, so uh, that is like equal to senior registrar. That is that means you have completed MD, right? Um, and uh, but you haven't uh, got your board certification. I think Lanka um, well described about the PG uh, stream uh, when it comes to clinical. So um, Lecturer confirm is like equivalent to senior registrar post. And then in our universities, we have senior lecturers, grade two and senior lecturers, grade one. So they are basically equivalent to board certified consultants in the ministry. But uh, then we have additional promotions uh, from uh, the senior lecturer level, uh, like associate professor, uh, professor on merit promotion and chair professor and senior professor. Now, uh, there are no equivalent positions in the Ministry of Health for these uh, professor, uh, professor posts. Right. Uh, now, what is the career progression um, uh, from a lecturer probationary? Uh, or do do if someone wants to be a professor, uh, uh, is it required for that person to go through all or uh, get all the promotions or get through all the promotion uh, stages? Uh, so basically, if you are if you are uh, recruited at the lecturer probationary level. Um, and then um, progress into lecturer confirmed, and then progress into senior lecturer grade two. Then after that, if you have necessary qualifications, uh, there is a promotional scheme so that you don't need to waste time. Um, you don't need to become a senior lecturer grade one. 
you can directly apply from that position to depending on your merit or your qualifications to associate professor or professor on merit promotion or cardiac professor so it's like that so basically up to senior lecturer grade two level we need uh, the, the system is in a way that you get your qualifications um, required for you know um, your postgraduate qualification necessarily to teach your subject well as well as um, you know you develop your teaching competencies after that based on the merit the merit that you have that means your research your teaching experience your um, you know teaching accomplishments um, your degrees and so on you can become a professor right so now the question is what are the entry criteria for lecturer probation that is the uh, initial step right i think um, there are uh, so this uh, entry criteria criteria are defined in the uh, ugc commission circular uh, 7 to 1 which um, uh, describes what what are the criteria that you should possess uh, to become a lecturer probation that is the um, um, you know the, um, the the first step of becoming a university academic right so uh, to enter into the university um, um, academic life as a probation lecturer, there are four uh, um, uh, four uh, categories, right? You can get into the system through one of these categories. First category is um, if you have MBBS with first or second class upper division for the final MBBS exam, right? Plus, at least one year of experience in teaching, research, or post professional work. Uh, that means, say, uh, if after you uh, uh, finish your degree, after the effective date of the degree, if you serve maybe like six months as a um, uh, demonstrator or a, a temporary um, demonstrator or a lecturer, and then Say you did your, uh, you then you go for your internship. So you can count the six months of uh, your, um, you know, um, uh, demonstrator position as well as six months of your um, uh, internship and show them as one year so that you have entry qualifications, right? Um, so I, I, I hope you understood. So the second category is if you have a second class lower, uh, 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 in the first category, say if you don't have a farm, uh, 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 say a first class or second upper in the finals, but still, if you um, had um, uh, a, say first class or second upper, in second MB or third MB part one or part two, if you are applying for a department in that well, that specific section, you can still um, you know uh, be considered in the same category. Uh, but uh, for the category two, if you have a second class lower, still um, you know um, you can be considered um, uh, with a with a one year of uh, experience in teaching, research, or professional work still you can be um, you know uh, recruited under the category two so whenever say if there's an interview so there are many candidates um, if there's a candidate you know fulfilling the criteria for um, uh, category one they will get the priority but there are no if there are no uh, category one candidates then you will get um, if you are the category two one then you will get the chance right uh, it works in that way so then in the third category, right, um, if you don't have any classes, but still if you have, um, you know, a, a MSc, right, um, of at least like two year MSc, then you can be considered as a, um, for the post of a probationary lecturer. And, the, and if you don't have anything like, uh, you know, no postgraduate qualifications, you have no classes in UMBPS, still, uh, if there are no other candidates who have applied for that position, uh, then you can be recruited under fourth category, um, but uh, for that, uh, you know, uh, your appointment has to be approved by the UGC. It takes some time, but um, it's also a, a, a possible option uh, to get into the university system, right? So now, when you get into the university as a, you know, a lecturer probationary, right, after MBBS, you have to complete a postgraduate qualification 
rel relevant to your department or your teaching uh, speciality right in order to for you to become a lecturer confirmed a confirmed lecturer otherwise uh, so uh, there's a time um, uh, uh, a time period given for you to get these qualifications, right? So you are given a minimum of three years and maximum of eight years. Within this time frame, you have to get the necessary um, postgraduate qualifications for you to become confirmed in your position, right? If you do not get a degree, um, uh, a required degree during this period, even after eight years, unfortunately, you have to leave the job. Uh, but um, uh, such instances are somewhat rare. However, it's possible, right? Uh, so um, you are only given eight years, and during that time, you have to get the postgraduate qualification, right? So, what are these postgraduate qualifications necessary for you to become a lecturer confirmed or even to progress into senior lecturer, right? So, PhD, Doctor of Philosophy, and then Doctor of Medicine, MD or master of philosophy or then if you have an msc with one year research component that is also considered so if you have one of these degrees if you get one of these degrees within this time period you will be confirmed in your position so from lecturer confirmed to senior lecturer now if you get enter into the university as a lecturer probationary right and then if you want to become senior lecturer you have to uh, wait for mandatory five year period. Um, if you finish your, uh, uh, you know, this degree before three years, before five years, um, uh, from the day onwards that you got this uh, qualified degree, you will be placed in the lecturer confirmed until the uh, until you fulfill fulfill the five year time, right? And then um, after that, you will be promoted to the senior lecturer with two position. So this is uh, how. Um, it works right so what is the difference between a master of philosophy and a phd right so a uh, master of philosophy is usually a two years uh, full time or three years part time degree right um, usually now these both mphils and phds are 100% research but there are um, coursework components as well depending on the universities that you uh, enter right usually they are thesis based uh, and then uh, in both degrees significant new contribution to knowledge is expected but phd which is the highest academic degree um, it is it goes usually that project goes into more broad you know more depth as well as um, uh, it, like thorough analysis compared to MPhil, right? So um, it usually takes three to four years full time or five to seven years part time, right? So if you want to become a senior lecturer, yes, I said MD, PhD, MPhil, MSc all work. However, for clinical departments, if you want to become a senior lecturer, you have to have MD with board certification, right? Um, I mean, like there's no point of uh, you doing a PhD and then um, you know thinking of getting into a clinical department because then if you are if you cannot function as a board certified consultant, there's no point of staying in such department. Again, in paraclinical departments, MD, PhD, MPhil, MSc, uh, any uh, uh, special any uh, degree would be okay depending on the subspecialty, but certain like even like although i say paraclinical there are certain disciplines like pathology uh, microbiology and um, and then forensic medicine and community medicine so they have very good md uh, programs right uh, so uh, if, uh, in those departments there's a blend of uh, especially pathology i think uh, pathology it's a completely a clinical specialty forensic medicine mostly a clinical specialty uh, and then um, Community medicine, there's a blend of, there can be uh, MD as well as PhD um, qualified people, right? So it depends on the departments, how they uh, look into that, right? And preclinical, again, you can have MD, PhD, MPhil, MSc, any of these people, right? But whatever the degree qualification that you get, still you need to undergo a um, induction program on teaching methods so that they are there um, you are kind of exposed to various teaching methods and uh, will uh, kind of be helpful for you to develop yourself as a teacher right so 
And now I have been talking about various degrees. Uh, you have to have some understanding about the Sri Lanka qualifications framework, which actually um, um, categorizes various degree qualifications and uh, you know uh, diplomas and all that various qualifications uh, into various levels. So uh, you are you have already got MBBS. So that is um, uh, at the SLQF level seven because of the you know the the content of the uh, degree and the you know the, the hours that you spend. Um, it is placed at seven, level seven, which is one step above bachelor's honors, right? Uh, or equivalent to postgraduate certificate. But um, you know the uh, postgraduate diplomas at uh, level eight, MSCs without research, level nine. MSc with at least one year research component that is level 10 and MPhils are level 12, uh, 11 and then PhDs and MDs are um, considered um, level 12 that is the highest right. So now say if you get into the university system uh, after uh, uh, M after MBBS and uh, say internship uh, and then what are the support what is the support that is uh, you know what are support available in the university system for you to complete postgraduate qualifications. So the university system provides a study leave, paid study leave for 39 months for you to get your qualifications. And if that is not enough, then uh, you are entitled for a 21 month um, study leave, non-paid, right? So a total of 60 months, right? Paid and non-paid in combination. That is a large duration, that's five years, right? And then if you, uh, pursuing for a clinical degree that is an MD, it's not a study leave that applies, that is a release for the ministry, released to the ministry for MD training, right? And then uh, in the university system, there are various postgraduate scholarships usually arranged through uh, the, United, uh, the UGC, right? You get all this uh, support for that, right? Um, say um, if you are in a preclinical department and you are in a, um, um, you, you want to do your PhD, well, uh, you have, uh, you know, good enough, uh, you know, paid leave as well as non-paid leave if that is not enough to get the full qualification, right? So now uh, the question is, what is best suited for uh, a MBBS graduate joining non-clinical department, right? So, well, my advice is joining university after MBBS and then do part-time MPhil for confirmation, right? Because at that time you can work in the uh, department, learn how to work in a, you know academic environment and teach students and uh, you know, get yourself oriented as a um, university teacher and then get promoted to senior, you know, senior lecturer position and then you can um, you know, do a PhD claiming your study leave, right? Uh, so uh, that actually facilitates uh, for you to become a senior lecturer in a very quick time. That is the path that I took. So I basically, I did my uh, MBBS and then um, even before the MB, uh, internship, I joined the faculty and then went for internship, came back and then did my MPhil. So within two and a half years to three years time, uh, about three years time, I finished my MPhil and then became a lecture or became confirmed or got confirmed. And then within the minimum five years, I became a senior lecturer. And then after that, I went for my PhD, right? So this allows uh, uh, to develop and mature yourself as a teacher, right? Because like, you know, as a junior teacher, you learn how to interact with students. You can experiment with your teaching skills, understand what is best for you and what is best for students right and then also you develop and mature as an administrator right and then it uh, it allows yourself to become an independent researcher right uh, and then not only that during that time you can you know accumulate some publications and develop a very good cv so that you are in a very competitive position uh, to go for a phd scholarship in a very good place right so that is uh, uh, that is my advice for um, MBBS graduates joining a non-clinical department, right? And then again, a little bit of uh, information about local PhDs versus PhD abroad. Well, there's no difference legally or for career progression uh, between local PhDs, uh, that is PhDs done in our setting 
or PhDs abroad, right? So there are excellent academics in with both local PhDs as well as those with uh, PhD abroad. So there's no difference. There are miserable academics, both who have got uh, abroad uh, PhDs abroad as well as local PhDs, right? So it depends on what best suits you. What is your, uh, you know, uh, what are your interests? Um, there may be very good local PhD opportunities. Uh, there may be very good local PhD guidance. So in such cases, uh, you can do it here, right? There's no no problem. Ultimately, um, what is what defines you is your academic contribution. It's not the um, PhD, right? Or the or the qualification. It's it's the academic contribution that you do as an academic. That is that is uh, that that will define you. Right. Um, so, but there may be some slight academic advantages in doing PhDs abroad. They may be getting trained in um, very research intense settings in your field of specialty so that you will be my uh, PhD, I ha had a, a very good opportunity in teaching both medical undergraduates in Monash University, as well as uh, nursing undergraduates and uh, science undergraduates. So that, that, that actually helped me to develop as a teacher a lot. And then uh, when you come back to Sri Lanka after your PhD, there are, you can establish continued collaborations with your institute. Uh, so that you can train or quote uh, or um, train uh, your own students in Sri Lanka um, collaboratively with uh, you know your collaborators in outside so you can develop strong institutional links right so uh, what is best suited for uh, MBBS graduate joining a clinical department right so you can join uh, the university after MBBS as a probation lecturer uh, like in the stage of medical officer registrar, uh, if you are a senior registrar, like having MD, you can do, uh, join as a lecturer in the transitional position, or uh, if you are a person with MD with board certification, uh, you can directly join as a senior lecturer, but uh, the least complex would be joining university after MD as a senior registrar. Right, because then you have no like uh, you can directly like uh, uh, get the position in the university and then go for overseas training and get from uh, you know um, get uh, then uh, after the overseas training you return and get promoted uh, to the senior lecturer position. Right? Otherwise, if uh, because you are a ministry employee, uh, you are you know uh, now um, you know joining the university. Then there are certain um, you know procedures that has to be followed in you know uh, um, transferring your position from the Minister of Health to the um, to the university that takes time and it's uh, slightly complex. So um, and also remember if you are uh, say if you join the university as a um, MBBS graduate only uh, and then. Uh, you are only given eight years to complete uh, your MD course, uh, MD, so that means you have to be pretty sure that you say if you, uh, you get through MD part one and um, and you finish your registrar period and get through the part two. If you are, say, if, if there are several attempts that are not successful, then now you are in a, a kind of a um, real stress because you are only given eight years. So that's why I said the least complex would be joining university after MD as a senior registrar and then go for post training, right? So uh, there are various advantages of university academic life, much relaxed rules and regulations because you are in an academic environment. You are, there are no, not many bosses um, on top of your head, right? Um, um, there are not institutional, um, you know, a lot of hierarchies. Oh, there are some, but uh, it's not really, you can, you can question anyone. Uh, in your academic environment, as an academic, you have you can do problems. Uh, it's part of uh, your the privileges of you enjoying as a medical uh, university academic. And your retirement age would be sixty five years. And there are no transfers uh, in the ministry. You have to go from one place to another. But here, uh, you are permanently uh, 
uh, staying in one place it may be an advantage maybe a disadvantage uh, disadvantage depending on how how would you like to see that so there are a lot of opportunities for um, continuous professional development you are given a sabbatical leave that means every seven years of work you will be given one year of paid leave for you to improve your um, you know academic um, skills so you can go abroad and work in another place while you are having paid leave uh, from the university after seven years right every seven years you have one year right and uh, you get financial support we used to have a lot uh, but uh, for various your academic activities but now um, you know with the current situation uh, uh, it's not that much but um, there are opportunities right and there are lots of conferences and training opportunities that you get and you get a lot of opportunities for research um, you get research grants you get the chance for postgraduate supervision and postgraduate examinations right um, and also national policy making you have a contribute you can uh, contribute for uh, you know the national policy making so uh, uh, I'm not going to waste a lot of time, so I, I, but what I want to highlight is what Professor Kosala said. I, when I, uh, you know, when I was a medical student, I want to be a, wanted to be a researcher and a university teacher. So I had my planning and I, my planning even internship uh, targeted that. Uh, so I, I wanted to get the qualification and quickly join the university and pursue a research career. And I, I, I planned every step like uh, to, you know, getting uh, the, um, you know, getting confirmed in a very a minimum time period getting uh, into uh, the post of senior lecturer or promoting getting promoted to senior lecturer post with the minimum time that is five years and i had my uh, goal of uh, being a professor within uh, 10 years uh, so i did it uh, with uh, roughly about like nine and a half years so 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 when you set the uh, targets right uh, you can um, you know um, you know you can um, you know go along with that line uh, you know, uh, rather than you know wasting time to uh, kind of like uh, trying to understand what you should do so uh, final message is uh, you know um, if you want to pursue your university academic career do it only if you have passion for teaching if you are not interested in teaching you are entering or you, you you are pursuing a university academic career because of other interests well don't do that that will ruin your life that will ruin students life right and you have to have a passion you have to have a continuous interest to develop your teaching skills uh, based on students responses trying to you know understand what is best for students what is uh, what what will make me a better teacher right and then you have to be committed for lifelong learning because you are teaching students your field of speciality changes every day so you have to be updated with it and you have to be interested in research because um, you know research is an essential part of an academy right and then you have to be a role model for students right we remember we, as students uh, i was a medical student some time back so even reflecting back i remember uh, good teachers as good teachers forever right so um, you have to be a role model for students if you are not prepared for that well don't pursue a university academic career because it's not going not only going to ruin your life it will ruin the student's life as well so that's my message thank you very much